we are going to be now talking about probability measures and properties. So this now kind of is a relationship between the set theory and the probability theory. So it also will be very easy. It's just a few notations that you need to know before we actually go into probability proper. So let's start with the first one. Uh, let me grab a pen. Okay. So the first one we have probability probability of the universal set is 1. So this means that probability that an event in the universal set occurs is 1 or in the sample space. Yeah, sometimes it, textbooks may use it interchangeably. So it means that when you have set of items in a sample space, and that is the sample space you are working with, probability that an event happens from that sample space uh, is 1 because all the probabilities uh, has to be in that sample space. And also take note that this sample space have subsets of which empty set is a subset of the sample of the sample space. So this will be clearer as we go. All right, the next one says that if so let's call this one, let's call this two. If uh, A A is a subset know why I don't get this. A is a subset of the universal set. Then probability then probability of A uh, should be greater than or equal to 1. So this also makes sense because if A is part of the universal set then there is a probability that A will occur. So, and this follows from the fact that, uh, okay, as I've explained, let's just take the third one. In this case, let's say we have two uh, subsites of A, and we call them A1 and A2. So now this case, if a1 and A2, they are disjoint, meaning that there is no intersection between them. So let me write here, if, if A1 and A2 are disjoint, then probability of A1 union A2 is equal to probability of A1 plus the probability of A2. So what we have is probability of A1 union A2 equals probability of A1 plus probability of A2. So now you can see that we are coming close to uh, probability now. We are gradually moving away from set theory to probability theory. So now these are the three measures of probability. And now let's continue. We have another one says probability of A complement mm -hmm, is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. So this also makes sense because A, A plus A complement makes up the universal set. Probability of the universal set is 1. So it makes sense that we cannot actually write this as, as probability of uh, A plus the probability of A complement equal to 1. The reason is because probability of A, uh, A, A the, the set A plus A complement makes up the universal set. So that's what you have in mind. Uh, let's call this 4. Let's take another one, 5. We have probability of an empty set is equal to 0. Yeah. So 
Let's see. The next one, because there are a whole lot of them, I, I actually have to decide where to stop. Because I need to take the much we need for us to continue in the first part of the probability theory. So let's take number six. So in this case, if uh, A is a subset of B, then now this is very important, then probability of A must be less than or equal to the probability of B. So we are saying that if A is a subset of B, then probability of A is less than the uh, probability of B. Let's take an example. Let's say we have an event B to be when the cloud is heavy. And A is the event that it rains. So we can say that anytime the cloud is heavy, then it will rain. That means that in this case, that is going to rain is a subset of the cloud being heavy. And in that way, the probability that it is going to rain will be less than the probability that the cloud is heavy. Because each time the cloud is heavy, it can either rain or it may not rain. So, so try to get it around your head and after some time we're actually going to apply this in real life, in real scenarios when we are going to start solving problems. I'd like to remind you to subscribe, also like the video. If you have any challenges following some of these lessons, uh, leave a comment for me below. Now we are going to go into the, the key part of this course, basics of conditional probability.